Good morning, Beach Peak, and thank you for joining our, joining us for our Wednesday morning devotional time. Um, today I want to uh, kind of remind you of something that I have to remind myself often. When we come to the Lord in prayer, we're actually acknowledging two things in our life. The first thing that we acknowledge is that we are admitting to God that what we're bringing to Him in prayer, we cannot do ourselves. And I find myself in that trap many times. Um, uh, if something comes up and I try to resolve it myself, uh, when I go to God in prayer, I'm literally taking that which I've been working on and trying to do myself. And what I do is I take it to God and I acknowledge Him. First thing is I acknowledge to Him, Father, I can't do this on my own. The second thing that we acknowledge uh, to God when we come to Him in prayer is that we know that He can do what we are bringing to Him. Let me illustrate that for you this morning. The first part about when we bring something to God, we admit to Him that is something that we cannot do. And uh, I'm going to use the same illustration for both of these. Sometimes uh, take yourself back, maybe a few years when you had younger children, maybe sitting in your living room and you're sitting in a chair and they're sitting on the floor and they're doing a puzzle maybe, and you're watching them and they're trying to take this piece that they know is supposed to go right here and they keep trying to force it into that place where it doesn't belong and they try twisting it, they try turning it, they try maybe even flipping it over and all of a sudden they just kind of throw up their arms because they can't get it. Well, uh, you know that you know exactly where that piece needs to go and how it should fit into the puzzle and you're kind of just waiting for them to get to that point where they realize they need some help. Well, that really describes where we are as believers in Jesus Christ and our relationship to our Heavenly Father in prayer. You know, God uh, sees us struggling with this issue. And His greatest desire is, He says, Gordon, He says, I know the answer to that. I know how it's supposed to work. Just bring it to me. Just bring it to me. And then all of a sudden, you know, maybe your child gets frustrated. He takes that piece of puzzle and he stands up and he brings it over to you and he hands it out to you and you simply take it out of his hands and you go over and you put that piece of the puzzle right where it needs to be. I think that beautifully illustrates what our prayer life is with our Heavenly Father. Uh, first of all, uh, this morning, uh, when you bring something to the Heavenly Father, the first thing that you admit to Him is this. Father, I can't do this on my own. I don't understand how, how it can get untangled. I don't understand how it can be accomplished. But I'm placing it into your hands. And by placing it into His hands, you actually admit the second portion of that, which, Father, I'm trusting you that you are strong enough, you are wise enough, you're powerful enough to accomplish what I cannot accomplish. Uh, since you're uh, by yourself this morning, if we were in our congregational setting, I may ask you to raise your hand or, or stand up. But I want you to de describe your prayer life this morning. And I'm going to give you three words, and I want you to think about the one that best describes your prayer life. Is your prayer life cold? In other words, uh, maybe you can't remember the last time that you prayed, or maybe you haven't even prayed this week at all, and it's already Wednesday. Uh, or is your prayer life lukewarm? Uh, that would be a person who I would describe uh, prays when he needs to pray. In other words, uh, if there's an issue in his life that, that, that he's struggling with or she is struggling with, then we take it to the Father. Or is your prayer life what I call on fire? In other words, you are consistently in prayer. I mean, most people believe that that's impossible, but I don't think it is. I believe our prayer life needs to be a consistent, almost constant conversation with God all day long. It's like we, we in the morning when our eyes open, we say, good morning, Father. At the end of our day, the very end of our day, the last word of our, out of our mouth for that day is the word, Amen. Uh, so what one word would best describe your prayer life? And you can be honest because nobody's going to know how you answer. But I would tell you, your response to that one question will indicate how vital you feel prayer is in your life as a believer. If you say that your prayer life is cold, then I would say that you, that you do not probably think prayer is very vital to your life. If it's lukewarm, you probably still don't believe that it's vital to your life. But if your prayer life is on fire, you understand how vital prayer is to your daily life. I like, I like the way the, the theologian Martin Luther puts it. He says, to be a Christian without prayer, in other words, to be a person who is a follower of Christ uh, without prayer, is more is no more impo is no more possible than being alive without breathing. In other words, Martin Luther says, for us to be believers in Christ, prayer is as vital as the breath that we take in. 
But one of my favorite scripture verses, and this is the one I want to share with you today, actually comes from the book of Isaiah. It's Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. Take your Bibles and turn there. Isaiah is going to be a little bit to the right of the book of Psalms. It's, it's a rather long, he's called a major prophet because of the length of his book. So you shouldn't have a problem finding him. Isaiah chapter 60, 65, verse number 24. In Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24, in the New American Standard, it reads like this. It says, um, And it will come to pass that before they call, I will answer. While they are yet still speaking, I will hear. Now that's the New American Standard. That's the translation that I prefer to preach out of. But let me challenge you, and you can, uh, you can use a Bible app such as Gateway Bible that allows you to pick a scripture then look at different translations. And as long as you stay in a translation, you're going to be okay. Stay away from the paraphrases, but stay in a translation. Now that uh, New American Standard, now let me read you the New Living Translation of that same verse. And uh, the New Living Translation, uh, translation of Isaiah 65, 24 says this. He says, I will answer them before they even call to me. Now how can God answer before I call? I, well, God is all-knowing, so he even knows before I'm going to pray. So in the New Living Translation, it says, I will answer them before they even call. While they are still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayer. This one verse, Isaiah 65, 24, has brought me tremendous comfort uh, when I pray. Because in that verse, listen to it again in the New Living Translation. God says, I will answer them before they even call to me. And then he says, while they're still talking about their needs. In other words, as you're pouring out uh, to the Lord the, the needs of your life, God says, while they're still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. Now he's going to answer those prayers in his time. He's going to answer his, uh, those prayers in his way. They're going to an he's going to answer those prayers in a way that is best beneficial for us and is honoring and glorifying to him. Let me just point out one thing this morning from that verse uh, that comforts me in my time of prayer. It says, before I even utter one word in prayer, in other words, when I bow my head to pray, before I even utter the first word of that prayer, God has already prepared an answer to that prayer. So think about this morning, you may have already had your, your devotion in prayer time, or maybe you're going to have it a little bit later on. But the amazing thing to me is, and the thing that I think that God has really developed in my life, is just to be in a consistent attitude of prayer. Uh, every waking moment. That doesn't mean I'm praying every waking moment, but it means I am in an attitude of prayer every waking moment. As the Holy Spirit uh, pricks my heart uh, about something, uh, why does the Holy Spirit touch our hearts about things? And I believe it's because one of those things may be that we need to pray about. Uh, another thing it may, it, uh, may indicate is something that we need to do. Uh, so I say the thing that really brings me comfort is this. Um, it is not like I come to God with my prayer request and then he begins to develop an answer to my prayer. It's not like when I come to God in prayer, he says, okay, well, now that you pray that, let me get to work on that and see what I can do. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. Look at Isaiah 65, 24. While they're still talking about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayer. God already has developed an answer to your prayer. And like that child who's sitting on the floor, I find myself in that position many times. I'll be like that child sitting on that floor, and I'm struggling with this issue. Maybe think about the piece of puzzle. You know, I'm, I'm struggling with it. I'm turning it over. I'm wrestling with it. I'm getting frustrated with it. And the father is just sitting there looking at me and saying, Lord, give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. Just give it to me in prayer. I've already got a plan figured out. I say, no, this verse says that before I utter a word in prayer, God has already heard me. What a blessing that is. And has a plan to meet my prayer needs. The other day I had to make a call to uh, Social Security. And um, I was at uh, uh, the office computer in the pastor's office. And I dialed the number and um, came on board. I had to punch a couple of numbers to let them know what I wanted, what I needed. It's a very simple question. And it says, um, all of our agents are now busy. And your estimated wait time is one hour and 15 minutes. Did you get that? Your estimated wait time is one hour and 15 minutes. Now, I didn't want to, uh, I needed to make that call. I needed to go ahead and get that issue resolved. And what I did was I just 
put it on speakerphone, and I kept working here in the office. And uh, it it took a little bit over an hour and 15 minutes before I finally got to speak. Now that's Social Security. Think how busy God is. You know, during that message, as I was waiting, they kept reminding me of how many people Social Security is serving. As a kind of reminder, this is why you're waiting. Well, you know, the amazing thing this morning is that when you go to the Lord in prayer, you're not going to get a, a, an estimated wait time. You're not going to get a, 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 a voicemail that says, hey, sorry, I missed your call. Uh, I'll get back to you. Uh, if it's urgent, uh, let me know. No, you know, we are told to come into His presence boldly. When His children begin to speak, I believe that God hushes all of heaven and listens to our prayers. In Isaiah chapter 65, 24, uh, God says to us, He says, listen. He says, before you even speak one word, you already have my attention. Before you even speak one word, I already have a plan developed to answer the need that you're talking about. And the amazing thing is this, and I've had, especially in the ministry experience we've had, is often I will come to God and I say, you know, Father, you know, there are these two doors before us as a church family, and, and I want to be sure that we choose the right door. And Is it door A or is it door B? Just reveal your will to us, and, and we'll go whichever way you want us to go. And I can't tell you how many times that God has told me, well, actually, Lord, this is door C, and this is the one I've chosen. So this morning, as you get ready to have your prayer time, let me challenge you to remember the words of Isaiah 60, uh, chapter uh, 65, verse number 24. Remember those words, that before you even utter one word this morning in your prayers, God hears you. And God says, I already have a plan developed in, in, in my power and my authority to be able to answer that prayer. Edward Harvey once said this, he says, A day without prayer is a day without blessing. And a life without prayer is a life without power. So let me challenge you today, if you want God's blessings, then be a person of prayer. If you want to experience God's power, then be a person of prayer. So thankful for all the prayer requests that you continue to update us. We got an update on one last night uh, around 7.30, 8 o'clock. We got an update on one of the things that we've been praying for. So we come in and we make that adjustment on our, on our, on our praise and prayer request list. I want to let you find some comfort tonight at 6.30, every Wednesday night at 6.30. All of our leaders who are deacons and yoke fellows that are available, join us, uh, join me through Zoom, and we'll spend a short time in Bible study together. And then we go into praying over these prayer request items. And a lot of times in those meetings, uh, deacons and yoke fellows are updating uh, me about some phone calls that they've had with you as our church family. So in the midst of everything we're going through now, we're trying to make every effort to stay connected. Uh, so let's go to the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. Uh, Father, even though it's raining and it's chilly outside, we thank you for the joy of your salvation that warms our hearts. We thank you for the promise of Isaiah 65, 24, that reminds us that before we utter one word, uh, Father, you already heard us. Before we utter one word, you already have a plan designed to answer our prayer. You've already put it in place, and that brings us great peace. We begin today by as always, praising you for what you've already done. Uh, Father, we continue to praise you that uh, Cooper Bishop and his uh, mom and dad, uh, Sherry and Bo, who are up in Boston, we continue to praise you for the progress that Cooper's making. And uh, Father, we uh, just ask you to put your hand upon this young man. Continue the healing. Father, strengthen Sherry and Bo and Chloe. Father, as they minister to Cooper, thank you for the doctors and nurses that are there. Thank you for the skills that you've given them. In the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we simply ask for a complete physical healing for Cooper. We would be bold enough this morning to pray that this would be the last heart surgery for this young 13-year-old man, a boy, would be able to have, would have to have. Father, again, we praise your name for what you did and the, the stewardship of our church family over this past week. What a blessing it's been to see so many people who are who are giving online, so many people who are dropping their tithes and offerings off by the church office. Father, it touches my heart that in the midst of all we're going through now, we are still remaining faithful in our stewardship. Uh, Father, we come this morning with some prayer requests. Uh, we continue to lift up uh, uh, Michelle Cognac stepdad Kirk, who has been diagnosed with lung cancer. Uh, the doctors have given him a, uh, a limited time uh, of life. 
and also how that can be expended through some treatments. But Father, we always find solace, we always find peace in the fact that nothing is true until you speak. I believe with all my heart that you can heal her. You have the power, you have the authority to do that. But Paul and Michelle have specifically asked us to pray that uh, for wise decisions from the medical staff, uh, Father, that you would give them wisdom in Kirk's care. We'd also pray for Michelle's mom, Patty, for, phys uh, for the physical burdens that she's carrying now, that you would give her easement of those burdens. You tell us to cast our burdens upon you. You tell us literally to yoke up with you and that you will carry those burdens for us. So I find that Patty would find peace in that. Father, we continue to pray for Renee Smith's, uh, Smith's nephew. We just lift him up this morning as he is recovering from this automobile accident a week ago. Surgeons went in to uh, reattach some muscle in the upper left arm, reattach some skin that was had been uh, torn. So, Father, we pray that you would ease his pain and suffering, that his healing would be swift and complete. Father, we pray for uh, Jamie and Sarah Waddell's son, Preston. Uh, we got word last night, though, Lord, that his uh, rapid stress test has come back negative, and he's still experiencing some sore throat issues and also some fever. So, Father, we pray that you would break that fever, that you would heal this throat in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We pray for Cheryl and William. Uh, Father, I, talk, I had a chance to talk to them yesterday, and uh, Cheryl was coming back from the last portion of this chemo treatment here. Uh, Father, it would be our bold prayer this morning that this would be the last chemotherapy treatment that she has to go through. Uh, Father William is also coming back from his immune therapy appointment over the VA hospital. So tomorrow morning they're going to be leaving early. Thursday morning they're going to be leaving early, going to MCV. Uh, Father, uh, they're not sure if William's going to be able to go into the hospital with Cheryl. Father, we ask you to give them favor that he can be by her side. We'd also ask, Lord, that this um, uh, stem cell transfusion would go smoothly. There'd be no complications. And also, Lord, that they would be able to come home tomorrow morning. So, Father, we're just claiming in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, victory over cancer and Cheryl's life, strength and uh, healing for William also. Father, we ask you uh, we continue to touch the heart of Diane's dad, Jim Vaughn. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, for the fact that he's reading his Bible. And we thank you, Lord, for the fact that he's asking spirits for questions. So, Father, we would pray, Lord, today that you would touch his heart, that even today would be the day of his salvation. Father, we continue to pray for John Burroughs, his brother-in-law, Kent. We had a chance to speak to him yesterday. And uh, because he is on the list and he's near the top of the list, he has to be within about 30 minutes of due where the transplant will take place. He, uh, Kent is in his 60s. He's going to get two new lungs. Uh, these diseased lungs he has will be removed. New lungs will be put in. So, Father, I pray that uh, you would arrange for this surgery to be done in your time. He's ready. He's there. He's just waiting for that phone call. And that these new lungs will be able to be transplanted. Uh, Father, I thank you for the skills you've given the doctors. Do that. I can't even imagine that happening. But you have gifted and talented medical staff to be able to do that. Pray the surgery would go well, the transplant would be successful. And Father, we ask you would honor and glorify yourself through this. We continue to pray for Diane Smithson's mom, uh, Sally Perkins, Father, who is battling uh, stage 3A lung cancer. I thank you that uh, Diane can be there with her. pray you would strengthen Diane. I pray you would heal Sally for your glory. We ask, as uh, Diane has asked us to pray, that you would strengthen uh, their family, especially Sally, as they walk through this trial and bring complete and uh, complete physical healing to uh, Diane Smithson's mind. Father, we pray uh, for several who have lost relatives here in the last few days. We pray for Betty Borders, Father, who, uh, whose daughter in Texas passed away unexpectedly. And Father, there are so many questions that are there for the family, but we give you praise that as I spoke with Betty, uh, she is assured of her daughter's salvation. So her daughter is now with you, and she eagerly awaits the rest of her family. But I pray you would give the family peace and comfort. She would give them wisdom, Lord, in how to uh, best approach uh, the passing of, of Betty's daughter and how all the questions can be answered and what the details that need to be taken care of. Uh, Father, we also continue to pray for Larry and Kathy Hebert passing of their daughter Kate in California. 
several weeks ago in the midst of this virus and everything that's going on. Father, I pray that you would give them wisdom as a family and how to navigate this time. Give them peace and comfort in the fact that Kate is now with you in heaven. Father, we do pray, Lord, today also for Janet. We lift her up to you. Uh, Father, her mom passed away. Uh, whenever she talked about her mom, Janet would always say that she's 96 years young. I thank you, Lord, that the last statement she made to the, to the uh, staff that uh, was where she is, is that this is the day the Lord has made. So, Father, I thank you this morning that she is in uh, heaven with you. She eagerly awaits Janet and her family. Pray for Cheryl and Henry Wilmer's uh, daughter, Amanda, her Bible professor, has asked prayer for a si his sister, Sarah, who lives in Detroit. Uh, she has tested positive for this virus and is immune compromised. She has been isolated from her husband and 11 month old daughter. I pray, Lord, you would heal Sarah for your glory. Pray for Connie McManus this morning. She has asked prayer for a friend of hers, Joyce, who has a brother who lives in New York. Uh, his name is Mike. He's recently been diagnosed with having the coronavirus. Uh, she's very, uh, Joyce is very concerned about Mike's recovery from the virus uh, due to several existing health issues. So, Father, I pray as he's extremely uh, exhausted both physically and mentally that you would go before and give him healing, strength, and comfort during this time. Pray as Angie White has asked for Pat Robertson, Gordon Robertson, as they lead CBN, this ministry that is reaching out and assisting so many in this time of great crisis in our nation. That you would give them wisdom how best to plan uh, how CBN can be used for your glory during this time. Pray for Mary Lottman, Lord, we lift her up to you. She's asking prayer for her grandson, Adam, who works at a Harris Teeter right up the street from our church. I pray, Lord, that you would put your hedge protection around him and keep him safe, Lord, from this virus as he works. Father, we have been praying for Pastor Bill yesterday, and as he had to go to the ER with, uh, with uh, PVCs, which is an extra heartbeat that occurs randomly. Uh, so, Father, we give you praise that all the blood work came back clear stress test came back good and so did the ultrasound. They made some adjustments to his, uh, his intake of caffeine and have also asked him to follow up with a cardiologist. So we just pray, Lord, that you would touch our dear brother's heart and Father establish a regular rhythm of that heart. Even to the point, as he goes to the cardiologist, they can't even find this extra heartbeat. Father, we pray for Jennifer Galati's dad. Uh, Father, I thank you that you have seen him through surgery. I thank you that even the portion of the tumor that had to be left in because of where it was has been destroyed by radiation. So, Father, we pray as right now her dad is in a, in a very intensive physical therapy, very exhausting for him. I pray you would strengthen him. Uh, he's not able to bear weight on his leg right now, uh, so he's going to have to go home in a wheelchair. And if all goes as planned, he will go home on April 24th, depending on how his week goes. So I pray for a complete physical healing for him. Father, I thank you for those that have been praying for Tiffany Squires, uh, a relative of ours, and uh, they have prayed in particular for a conversation that Kimberly, her sister, was going to have with her about her salvation. Uh, Kimberly went to the house and spoke through her sister yesterday through a window. And uh, Father, uh, Tiffany, uh, to be honest with you right now, is not receptive to the gospel. But, Father, that doesn't mean the Holy Spirit cannot continue to work. Uh, Father, I pray, Lord, that you would touch Tiffany's heart this morning, that all the things that she has heard spiritually, all the things that she has seen spiritually, Father, that she would be reminded of. I pray if there's any wall between you and her, it would be destroyed by the mighty hand of Christ. She would have a yearning in her soul to be saved. I pray you would continue to draw her husband, Sean, closer to you. And I pray for Kimberly and for her husband, uh, Corey and their family, Lord, as they continue to invest and invite Tiffany to a relationship with Jesus Christ. We'd also pray for Tiffany as she continues to battle cancer, that you would give her victory. Father, we pray for Acts 1 8 ministry focus this morning. Uh, Father, uh, we pray in particular this morning as we have 5,027. I called Nam yesterday to get an exact number. They said, as of today, we have 5,027 missionaries that are serving King Jesus in the United States and Canada. And we have met some of those this week. We have talked about individuals that have left homes in New York and gone to Puerto Rico. 
that have left homes in Arkansas and have gone all the way to Seattle because you have called them to go and to plant churches and work with man to meet the needs of those individuals. So Father, uh, Kevin Ezell, who is the president of NAM, has asked us this month to particularly pray, first of all, for the missionaries that are serving in the field, these over 5,000 missionaries, but that they would share the gospel boldly and uh, winsomely with those they meet in their communities. Father, I also pray for strength and wisdom uh, in dealing with cultures that they are in that are often uh, hostile to the Christian faith. And lastly, he's asked us to, uh, for you to raise up more harvesters to go into the field. I'm reminded, Lord, that you tell us when we look upon the field, it's white and ready to be harvested. It is there, but we have so few harvesters to go. But I thank you for 5,027 missionaries that have said, here I am, send me. And they've gone to be anywhere in the United States, in Canada, in our provinces, Lord, to take the precious message of Jesus Christ. Father, our goal this year for our church family is $1,500, and it will be collected all throughout this month. I just pray, Lord, that every penny of this would, uh, we would give directly to NAM that would directly go to supporting these over 5,000 missionaries. Touch our hearts to give generously so others can go with the good news of Jesus Christ. Last of all, we just simply close by praying for our nation. I lift it up to you this morning. I pray for wisdom for our president and his cabinet and his counselors that are helping our nation navigate this time of this virus. I pray, Lord, he would seek you for wisdom. And you would give him wisdom and how best for our nation to approach this time. Father, I simply pray this as a church family and as a nation. Well, one day this virus will end. One day we'll be able to go to all the places we used to go to. But at the end of the time, my prayer is simply this. Let our church family, let our nation have represented you well. Father, let our nation and our church family have represented you well by the way we respond to this. Not as people without hope, but people who have an eternal hope in Jesus Christ. So Father, I thank you for those that have joined us this morning. Father, I thank you for your promise you give us in Isaiah 65, 24. But even this morning as we begin our prayer time here, he said, Gordon, I've already, I've already heard your prayers. Lord, and I already have a, a, an answer to the prayers that you've laid in my feet. So let us go about this day with this. If we want to be a blessed people, let us be a people of prayer. If we want to be a powerful people, let us know that that power comes to you. Bless those who are listening this morning. Uh, bless our leaders tonight as we gather with wisdom as we navigate this time. We ask all this in our Savior's name. Amen. Well, tomorrow morning we'll finish up this week with our time together. We'll look at another verse of Scripture to encourage our hearts. So as you meditate today, chew upon Isaiah 65, 24. May you bring you great peace. May we be known as a people of prayer. We'll see you in the morning.